Another season of Drag Race has come and gone, and just like Mariah Carey in December, I'm here to do what I do best. I do not know what I was thinking when talking about this All-Stars preseason. My mindset was fully like, oh, I have no idea who's going to win this. Everybody's a possible competitor. I'm so dumb. I guess not watching Drag Race for half a year made me naive and innocent. It made me believe in fairness and the good in the world. Jimbo's win was very obvious very early on in the season, starting with her performances and challenges, and then also, and sadly more importantly, her reddit. There were some fun episodes where you could suspend your disbelief and buy into the idea that Jimbo might get eliminated, but I have a feeling that this season on a rewatch won't be as fun. I wouldn't know, I'm not gonna rewatch it, but tell me if you will. This season tried copying All Stars 2 storyline and failed miserably. This is the third All Star season where a queen quit the competition to take care of her mental health, and I applaud that. I have nothing but love and support for Heidi. Allegedly, more queens wanted to quit the competition for those exact same reasons. So that does leave a pretty bad mark on the season as a whole. There were also the fame games, which are a fun addition too, where we would get to see each queen walk the runway for every single runway category. But I don't think the fans should have a say in who wins the prize money. I mean, they probably actually didn't, given what transpired in the season's penultimate episode and how you could vote, but I digress. This is the point system in place, let's talk about these queens. Starting from the bottom, the personification of Go Girl Give Us Nothing, in the 12th place we have Monica Beverly Hills. On one hand, I'm glad that Monica got a second chance to compete and to show off her drag to the audience, but on the other, it could have been someone a little more alive. I'm sorry if this is coming off as rude, but other than a few good looks that Monica had on the runway, she did not bring much to the competition or to the show. And that's what I'm talking about here in this video. In the 11th place, we have Darian Lake, with 5 points earned and a 1.25 pp score. I'm also marking how many times the queens voted correctly, for Darian that's 3 times out of 4, and how many times they won a lip sync against a lip sync assassin. Darian's performance competition this season was nothing to write home about, similar to how she did on season 6. However, unlike season 6, she was not a villain here. She came back, shared the fact that she had lost weight and that she has worked on and is still working on being healthy and happy, and that's honestly more important than any runway look or maxi challenge performance, especially for a US audience. I have nothing but love for Darian and her performance in the variety show in episode 11 was very unique, endearing and a nice cherry on top for a beautiful redemption story. In the 10th place, we have Nasha Lopez. I'm not shocked that Nasha was one of the early outs. On her original season, she did not do well either, and Drag Race nowadays is very comedy-based. Nasha would have been killer on the early single-digit seasons, where being beautiful could have led you through half of the season. But I don't want it to seem like Nasha is just about her beauty, she's also a fantastic dancer. A fact, I wish she had shown off better in the variety show, but hey, what can you do? In the ninth place, we have Mrs. Kasha Davis. I had high hopes for Kasha this season. I really liked her on season 7, and she had one of the better track records there. Due to the show needing to push younger queens, Kasha had to be discarded and not allowed back into the competition after let's admit it, a win-worthy makeover with Katya. However, she underperformed here. I'm sad that we never got to see Kasha in Snatch Game, but hey. Who knows, maybe she'll be back for a versus the world season. I'm glad though that she took her time in the season to talk about the fact that, oh my god, shocking, drag is not dangerous for children, and a funny, campy queen reading to kids and animating them is not going to corrupt the youth of the US. In the 8th place we have the first queen that actually has a maxi challenge win, and she's the winner of the first episode's maxi challenge, Kahana Montrese. As Kahana is Coco's daughter, I rooted for her on season 11, and I was happy to see her back on this season. On All Stars she showed that she's a fantastic performer and that she has amazing costumes, but that comedy, acting, and anything needing a well-developed personality are not her strong suits. She danced around the fact that she had plastic surgery and that she was from Vegas for most of the season those seemingly being her only character traits. And so by the seventh episode, her last episode, she kinda overstayed her welcome for me. But I must say, she had my favorite runway looks this season. 
In the 7th place, finally moving above the 2 PP score, James Mansfield with 14 points and a 2.3 recurring PP score. Going into All-Stars 8, I thought that James was going to be the early out queen that was going to get her redemption in the competition, win a couple of comedy challenges and make it far. She did redeem herself, but for some reason James got eliminated in episode 6, with all of the queens voting against her. To me, it came out of nowhere, and I was shocked. Does anybody know what happened there? Either way, I'm glad that James at least got that top 2 placement in the variety show and a win in the lip sync against Lala. However, the 11th episode is not really a competitive episode since the people competing were the eliminated queens and they were not competing to get back into the competition. So sadly, she doesn't get a boost to her track record. In the 6th place, with 24 points and a 2.6 recurring PP score, we have Alexis Michelle. Oh, I enjoyed Alexis this season. The villainy came out, and she was trying so hard to be sneaky about it. It's amazing. That scene with Heidi, Candy, Jimbo and her, when Alexis mid-sentence started lying should get an Emmy. Who could have written that? The level of caring for only her own ass that she exhibited there was so funny to me. Terrifying if she's like that out of the competition and reality show setting, but on TV, very entertaining. In the competition, Alexis did pretty good. She had some strong points like in the snatch game and in the design challenges, and her lows never were really terribly low. Plus, on the runway, she did not disappoint. Her gowns were gorgeous, at times clever, and always well made. She was a great addition to the season. In the fifth place, we have the love of my life, Jessica Wilde. Ugh, screwed. Let's get screwed. S C R E W E D screwed. Janelle Monet's new album is great, go listen to it. Screwed out of the finale, screwed out of a couple of maxi challenge wins, screwed out of the winning the fame games. But hey, at least she got to come back and be reintroduced to drag race audiences. I was rooting for Jessica or Heidi to win the season, so you can imagine that I'm not the most thrilled with the outcome but I am thrilled with how Jessica was presented this season. She got to show off all of her strengths. Her comedy, her personality, her beauty, her looks, her performance skills, all of it. She never got into petty drama. She, out of drag, defined this perfect boundary between Jessica Wilde, the character, the drag queen, and the performer doing her. We need more of that! I hope this stint on All Stars 8 opens many doors for Jessica, and a possible hosting gig for a drag race spinoff. A Hispanic drag race spinoff? You know, where the main judge is actually fluent in Spanish? Yeah. Am I asking for a lot? I hope not. In the fourth place, we have the runner-up of this season, Candy Muse, with a 2.9 PP score. You know how I said that I loved Alexis' villainy? Yeah, Candy did what Alexis did, but like, to the power of 10. She was so beautifully strategic, she just knows what Drag Race is and how it operates. She was a fantastic villain in this season. Of course, her setting up the fact that she was strategic did kind of mean that she had to be edited as a villain, and thus she also could not win the season. But second place is nothing bad. Candy had a couple of good episodes this season. But her competition performance was not necessarily something I would think of when thinking about her on All Stars 8. I mentioned this a couple of times in my weekly power rankings, but Candy's runway looks always seem to be wearing her. She's an entire production, and at times it seemed overproduced. But then again, that lends itself to being a good trait for a villain, so I think she knew what she was doing. In the third place, with a 3.25 PP score, finally something about 3, we have Heidi in Closet. Heidi's PP score was mandatorily going to be very high simply due to her quitting and not being eliminated, thus never having an episode where she got 0 points. I, to this day, applaud Heidi for leaving this season. Somebody might say, oh, but she was simply butthurt, or oh, she couldn't handle the competition, and like... Even if that were true, okay, and? Sometimes you have to do something to realize you should not be doing it, that it's not good for you. I wonder if, with a different cast, Heidi would have been able to thrive more on the season. In the second place, a shocker to me to be perfectly honest with you, we have Lala Ri. Lala has the same PP score as Heidi, but, you know, Lala did not quit the competition. So I had to put her over Heidi. Lalarina over here surprised me in the best way possible. As the weakest member of the winner's circle of season 13, I was not at all impressed by her. Then on this season, for the first couple of episodes, I was like, oh, filler queen. 
Okay. And then by mid-season, and especially by the end of her stint on All Stars 8, Lala just got this boost in performance during challenges and she kept impressing me. Now sure, sometimes me being impressed was more of, oh, nobody else did anything spectacular, leading to Lala's triumphs being in the same vein of Luigi wins by doing nothing, but sometimes she really killed the competition. I must point out her performance in the variety show. That was some of the best dancing we have seen on Drag Race in a while. Lalari, Coco Montrees, and Alyssa Edwards in a three-way lip sync win. I did see in my comment section that many people were not pleased with Lala's Fame Games win, given that her votes were tripled, and it seemed kinda set up for her to win it, especially because, you know, you could vote with a fake email, but I don't care enough to feel any sort of way about it, so simply Lala, congratulations. And the congratulations are in order for the winner of this season and the queen in the number one spot, Jimbo. Isn't it beautiful to see the winner of the season being statistically the best competitor? The last time we saw that, other than the ball winner season of course, was an All-Stars 4 with Trinity, but you know, double win, so not fully. So on All-Stars 2, yikes! Anyways, as I've said, Jimbo's win seemed quite obvious in hindsight, and this season felt like it was made for her to win it. In the challenges where she's not that strong, like the dancing and performing challenges, she only ever placed safe. That was some good casting, always keeping your favorite safe from a low placement with queens that would probably place even lower. Bravo. But Jimbo's win is deserved. I honestly cannot say anything against it. Even with the said dancing and performing downside to Jimbo, she still got to win a lip sync. And win her first lip sync ever on Drag Race, I think? So all of her storylines, starting from the first season of Canada's Drag Race, across UK vs. the world, were now concluded on All Stars 8. The biggest winner of this season, aka the queen that plays the most places above her original placement, is... No shock, Heidi in Closet. Her being the biggest winner was almost a given, based on just how she left the season. The biggest loser of this season, the jokes write themselves here, is Darian Lake. The notes! Let's go over only the high and low placements, since those are the only unofficial ones, and require you to read into the edit and look at the critiques and the judges' deliberations. In episode 1 with the Girl Groups Challenge, Alexis and Lala got overly positive critiques on their performances in the Maxi Challenge, so they were high. James Mansfield got overly negative critiques on her performance in the said Maxi Challenge, which is what counts, not the looks that were brought from home. Those do not count, because they were not the Maxi challenge. Thus, James was low. In episode 2, we only had high queens, Heidi and James. In episode 3, with the design challenge, Jimbo and Lala were high. I highly disagree with Lala being anywhere near the top 3 placement in this episode, but hey ho, the edit said overly positive critiques for the challenge, which was designing and making an outfit. That's why Candy is low. I saw your comments, Candy said that the other queen saw her as high. That's amazing, babe. But that's not how the critiques for Candy's look made for the challenge were shown to us. She's low. Episode 4 had a bottom 3. Jessica and Candy were high in this episode, so again, no low placements. In episode 5, we have no elimination due to Heidi leaving the competition. We had Alexis and James as high for the Snatch game, and again, no low queens. In episode 6, there were also no low placements, just Jessica and Lala as high for the Rusical. In episode 7, Candy finds herself as low again. I will repeat myself, listen to her critiques, and read into the edit of the episode. And then, Jimbo was high. Episode 8 only had Jimbo high for the design challenge. The rest of the episodes had no low or high placements. This is a table of the voting history, and this is the table for the lip syncs against the lip sync assassins. And that's it! That's the video! I have one or two more videos that I will make before going into hibernation again, and one of them will be about All Stars 8. Kinda. So, what did you think of this season? Do you think the right person won it? Do you think the right person won the fame games? Sound off in the comments, do not forget to like and subscribe, and Thank you for watching.